Petty, when you took this role, can you kind of describe how it's evolved? What and role are you referencing? In terms of uh, kind of an advisor to the program mm -hmm. and, and how that's evolved over the course of the, the last few years? Um, it hasn't evolved. I mean, I'm, I'm there for JED as a resource. I love coming here and spending time. I've been here for spring, spring practices. Now I'm here during the football season to view how they go about uh, their operation weekly. Um, that's my role. And I think within my role, what's changed is how the improvements within the program have just been tremendous. And I mean, the upward trajectory of this program is something that they all see inside in, internally. I mean, I recognize the energy of the players. I mean, the players, this isn't, this is, the players know that they, I mean, they have to make people see what they're doing here. And that, that, you do that by winning football games. And you do that against ranked opponents. And their opponent this week is ranked and it's on the road and be a big win for the program. Would you say that the, ev the evolution of this defense, that you've had, uh, you know, any hand in that at all? Listen, I talked, I, I, I sit on, I sit in meetings with the defense. I've talked to Johnny. I know Dwayne Aquina's there. These coaches don't need me. <laughs> okay, <laughs> they're fine. They're fine. They're doing a great job. You see what the defense has done this year and how much they've improved. It's, it's been dramatic. Johnny's doing an outstanding job. Is Dwayne any different than when you last were around him as a, or even as a player? He isn't different at all. Yeah, it's, um, I hear him tell kids run to the football and, he, and I, I'm like watching as an observer and it makes me want to run to the ball. You know, <laughs> I just remember those times when he did that. So it's good to have, you know, a blast from the past, I guess, on the staff, but still he, is, ha he has an incredible coaching experience uh, from all over the country, Texas, Stanford, those type of places that he is, he is proactive in adding uh, input. You, you played for you know, maybe the greatest defensive coach of all time uh, in, in Bill Belichick. Okay. Renowned for his X's and O's acumen, but are there some basic fundamentals that go into just any good defense that, uh, that you kind of have to have? Um, I mean, tough, physical, and smart. I mean, that's, that's how it's always been defined for us. Um, it's interesting going through the week this week and seeing them install and then seeing the players not get it the first day and then the second day they start to get it you know it's and, then, and that's coaching and that's the way they structure their practices that's the way showing them certain plays and formations a certain week and then just from the linebacker perspective you know Aaron Van Horn the linebackers coach just getting flow right or, or getting Manu right and then seeing him do it right the next day that's the way it works you know that's how improvement happens and it's happening out there what do you think of the, the criticism of, of Belichick? Did he forget how to coach or uh, uh, when he gets criticized like that and, and, and after a bad loss? No NFL, please. <laughs> Good? Yeah. yeah. So, no NFL questions, please. Okay. Thank I you. That. Yeah. Th yeah. These guys are going to be in the NFL, Michael Penix Jr. and Caleb Williams. What did you see from the Arizona defense, the way that they were able to kind of, you know, contain those guys a little bit? More Second so half, what do you have, 40 yards? I mean, he had his lowest rushing total of, of, of his season. What is it, one yard rushing? I forget what it was, but uh, I mean, that's a sign. I mean, if you can't see the growth, you're blind here in Tucson. Get your butt in the seats and start watching some games. That's what it should be. I'm, I'm, I'm really sort of, here in Jed, have to ask fans to, and, and the, the community to get to the stadium really irritates me because how can you not recognize what's going on here? But then there's a head coach that should be talking about the football team and game planning, and he's asking fans to get their butts in the seats. So I guess I'm doing it for him here because he shouldn't waste his time to have to do that. Can we ask something about that Bill said about you when they were here last year? Will you answer? Okay, sure, so he, I asked him just about, he said he saw you as a three technique defensive tackle, knew that wasn't going to be your role in the NFL, and just kind of, what do you remember about that transition from what they saw you as in college to what you became in the NFL? Yeah, I remember my very first um, line, linebacker meeting, which uh, <laughs> they put me in, and I had, no idea what to do and they were going over cover two and they said drop to the hook when it's passed and I raised my hand and I said where's that I had no concept I had no clue on pass defense or anything all I did here was play defensive end so jam seven technique line up on a tight end and I was a D lineman so I really didn't know I could transition um, I bought myself some time still being able to rush the passer because they did put me at three technique in the Super Bowl. I mean, I sacked Favre twice in that Super Bowl and Super Bowl 31, and that really bought me time to learn to play linebacker. It just so happens it happened under Pete Carroll, 
when he came in uh, for his three years with the program, but you know, lucky I was able to do that and play special teams and then learn and end up you know, changing myself. No. You're, you're a former Pac-10 Defensive Player of the Year. Uh, it's now the Pac-12. Yeah. Uh, a year from now, it might not exist at all anymore, at least as we've known it, the conference. What was your reaction when all that stuff was going down? It hurts a little bit, yeah. I mean, um, it was my dream as a high school player growing up in San Francisco, up there in Northern California, Roseville High School, to play in the Pac-10. It's like, where do you guys want to play? I want to play in the Pac-10. That's what it was all about, that the West Coast should have a conference that it can gravitate to and all the kids can just say it's Pac-12, we're West Coast and you got SEC over there, we've got Pac-12, we've got Pac-10, you know. Um, that sort of pride probably is disappearing now. It's a shame, but we had to get into a conference and so if that's the business of the game now. Like you said in your earlier question, it's night and day, you know what I mean, in terms of television rights and, and things like that. So uh, I'm just glad we have a landing spot next year. What do you think it means for, for Oh, sorry. Um, not a quarterback question of who's going to start, but just what do you make of Fafita just going up against two top ten teams and the way he's handled it? Yeah, Noah's, Noah's handled a lot, you know. I mean, he's exciting to watch. You know, I'm, I see Delora, though, and I see him getting better. You know, it's, good, it's a good problem to have when you have two quarterbacks that can go out there and play well for you. I think that's a sign of Jed Fish and his coaching that he can also coach up Fafita while he hasn't been playing, and all of a sudden he's in and he's ready to go. Um, Delora's getting better. We'll see what it is, the situation this week. But, uh, you know, Fafita has been one of those bright spots that knowing that going forward, you know, there's two guys that you can count on. What do you mean, think it means for these players to see the NFL influence? I mean, the, the Giants came here. The, the Patriots came here. You know, Zach Taylor's been in the building. Sean McVay's been in the building. To have those names that they're watching on Sunday come in here and touch this program. Well, if they have goals to play in the NFL, I mean, this is an obvious program to be. I mean, not only Jed's connection to across, really across the NFL, it's amazing how many, how many references he has um, and how many connections he has. Also to, you know, the system they run, especially offensively. I, Jed, he's a hell of a play caller because I watch the games as a former defensive player and I still analyze the game for ESPN. It's like, I mean, I see what he's doing, and that's, that's almost like pro football out there. I mean, the schemes that he runs, I mean, how his, his script is to start the game, it's, it's very NFL-like, you know, and that's why kids playing offensive football for him should really look at it and say, man, I mean, when you're watching film and you see, I mean, you're splicing in professional teams' plays so they can learn from players at the next level, I mean, it, it can really give you um, – can really sort of validate your goal that you're in the right place. In that same vein, back in your day, it would be pretty regular occurrence for Arizona players to be drafted highly. Yeah. Um, that has not been the case at all in recent years, but now it looks like with Jordan Morgan, Jonas Avanea, um, <laughs> Tetsuro McMillan, they're going to have yeah. some high draft picks. What, is, yeah. what can that do uh, for the program? Well, it's always good that you can tell a recruit about players that have been drafted. Um, I was here a few year, a couple years ago. I started a few years ago as as uh, his advisor, and from that team watching that to watching practice this week, you can tell that this is a different group of players. You know, you look like it's it isn't just like okay, well, there's the team in it. Oh, that that's one that probably can go in the, to the next level. Now it's like you see them all over, all the way from you mentioned those, but like there's younger kids coming up that have that type of size, speed, ability. I mean, this is a program that I think I mean, is only going to be more looked at to and looked to in terms of workouts, in terms of draft, in terms of, uh, I mean, I'm watching cowling out there. I mean, I told him, I mean, it's like I see guys like you all the time in the league, right in that slot that are doing specific things. I mean, these guys can play at the next level. It's huge for this program. What does it mean to you to be in this advisory role and to, to be still involved in your alma mater? Yeah, it's... It means a lot to me, really. That's him, and I, I appreciate Jed. I don't know how much Jed needs me, you know, because he is off and running and doing a great job. But, you know, he, we have great conversations, whether it's Zoom, over the phone, face to face. We each see each other um, when we're on vacation or me coming here. It's, it's just a great relationship I've loved to, I've loved to form with him. Um, and just to give him 
it's, it's, it's flattering that he still wants my advice on certain things. And a lot of it goes into, I mean, players and, and specific players and how they are in their development because I was there, you know, and what was my mindset when I was there. And it was a long time ago, but I can still relate and really see it from another side. So I think that's a lot of our conversations that involve that, yeah. You mentioned um, that there's, the, you've seen the changes in the program. Everyone should be able to see them, but they, they need the wins to kind of validate it. What would it mean, do you think, if the, if the program could make a bowl game this year? Does that, so would that sort of feel like the next step in the, in the process? If. When? I, I mean, <laughs> it's time, you know? Yeah, it's, um, and the, the kids, the players, they know that's, that's not all they want. I mean, they want a good bowl game. I mean, they, they're not satisfied with close. You know, that, that USC thing was close. Wow, good job. Don't accept that type of, that pats on the back because, and I don't think they want it. You know, being around them this week, they want to do more than what the expectations are here. I mean, I haven't, I don't, I haven't been in the community, I mean, on a regular basis, um, but I can see how maybe their expectations are probably lower than what they are in that building. You know, if they want, if they, I mean, they, they want wins, of course, but these kids don't just want to win. They want to dominate and they want to do it on a consistent basis. That better equal a bowl game this year. Yeah. And speaking of bowl games, uh, you said earlier that you like the fact that there's a bowl game um, here in Tucson. What do, you, what do you make of just the fact that this, is, this has been a thing now since, I think, 2015? Um, they've had one here. Is, it, is that just a, that, that exposure? For the city, yeah, the yeah, stadium. it's great. The, I mean, the people at the Arizona Bowl have been really great to me this week too. I mean, it's uh, the hospitality has been fantastic. Um, the job they do with the bowl game, and I had to get reintroduced on some of these helmets in the room in terms of what teams they were. I mean, that's a, di <laughs> it's a different type of Air Force helmet over there, you know. But um, you know, it's exciting. Like I said, Tucson's a great city, you know, and they put on a great bowl game. And I mean, if I were if I were a kid, I'd, I'd love to play in this bowl game. Yeah. Awesome. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Thanks, Teddy.